Hey guys, welcome back on this uh, Friday for another mini message, and we're going to finish up Genesis 31, and we'll start fresh next week with a uh, new chapter. But it says here, uh, Laban continues in verse 51, See this pile of stones, and see this monument I have set between us. They stand between us as a witness of our vows. I will never pass this pile of stones to harm you, I mean, you must never pass these stones or this monument to harm me. So there we, that's what I talked about yesterday. We're setting up that boundary. And notice that passing it, you know, was we're talking about harming each other. Verse 53, I will call on the God of our ancestors, the God of your grandfather Abraham, and the God of my grandfather Nahor. So remember, Abraham and Nahor were brothers. They worshiped the same God. Now, I don't believe Laban really worshiped God, but his grandfather did. And he, he's calling there on him, as it says right here after that, it says to serve as a judge between us. So it then continues. So Jacob took an oath before the fearsome God of his father Isaac to respect the boundary line. Then Jacob offered a sacrifice to God there on the mountain, invited everyone to a covenant feast. And after they'd eaten, they spent the night on the mountain. Laban got up early the next morning, kissed his grandchildren and his daughters and blessed them. Then he left and returned home and praise the Lord never to be seen again. But this is, you know, the end of the covenant here. They have set this up. And there was a lot of wisdom in having separation from Laban. And sometimes this is true, you know, with, with families, with married couples. Sometimes it's it's kind of good to move away from the in-laws and, you know, have a little distance sometimes. That can be a, you know, healthy thing, depending on what those relationships are like, because the Bible's specific, you know, that the husband will leave his father and mother and be joined with his wife. So they're the new family. So that's, you know, an important thing to have happen there. So there's some wisdom in that. And Laban and Jacob had more problems than most families, and they definitely needed some distance because Laban had consistently taken advantage of Jacob. The tables were turned. Jacob over the years had taken advantage of his father. He'd taken advantage of his brother. But now he's got a guy way worse than him taking advantage of him. So Laban departs. He has this proper goodbye. He says goodbye to his daughters and his grandchildren. I I'm sure probably, you know, the grandkids were, you know, hey, they, bye, granddad. You know, they was the, the goodbyes. Rachel and Leah from earlier in this chapter, you kind of tell they were done with him and they were ready to move on themselves. They were... He said they were being treated, I believe the phrase was, as foreign women. So they weren't even being treated really as daughters anymore by Laban. So he, I'm sure they were glad to uh, get rid of him. Uh, and so this is a good end for Laban. Laban was of the world and Jacob needed to be free of the world and seek after the things of, of God. So rather than seeking to follow God's plan, Laban just resented and he was jealous and coveted what Laban or what Jacob had. Laban was just a greedy person. He was a jealous person. He wanted to be on top. He wanted to be in charge. And at the end of the day, Jacob left more wealthy than him. And Laban didn't have those blessings. And his life is a warning that we shouldn't be self-seeking, that it won't serve us well. Laban lost his family. He lost his daughters. He lost his grandchildren. He lost the blessings that Jacob had brought into his house, all because of his greed. We'll see you guys later. You have a great weekend.